Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Saturday, October 21st, 2017, and today we're looking at the latest steaming fresh pile of field porn from WSO Steve Olson, his video WSO 2 Orbs ESO. Let's take a quick look at this video and set the scene. Olson, WSO, checking out the ESO camera down in Brazil. It's like a southern face, it's like in the southern hemisphere, okay, and the European Space Agency has this observatory down there, and they're the ones that made that big announcement about the gravitational wave last week. I didn't talk much about it because it didn't really mean anything to me. I mean, at the end of the day, they're going to try to find ways to explain all the different weirdness that's going on, and they're going to try to use all kinds of different, you know, scientific papers and whatever. At the end of the day, you know, their own camera is showing two orbs in the sky down in Brazil, right? Really? So we're seeing two orbs in the sky, are we, Steve? You wouldn't be lying to us again, would you? Q first uploaded a video about uh, ESO about a week ago, just before their big announcement. And in that video preview, you mentioned these orbs. So I turned on my trusty auto-downloader, and I've been saving images from ESO over the last week. And we're going to take a look at those images now. So here are the images that were saved by Sequence Downloader over the last week. You can see the first image here, 2017, October 14, at 12.37. Now this is my local system time, because the, the actual date and time from ESO is not saved in the file, and it's not actually displayed in the image. So we have to go by the date and time that it was downloaded onto my computer. And if we look at this, we can see this apparent orb in this first image. So let's just scroll down. We can see that we've got quite a collection of images there. They're downloaded every five minutes. And then as the sun comes up, the camera actually switches off and there are no more images to download during the daytime. So this is why we see this, this light area, because the sky is lightening up as the, as the sun is coming up. Same thing happens um, just before they start recording again, you've got the end of the sunset and we see this white around here again. But what do we see in this image here? We see that the orb is in exactly the same place. And this one is 2017 October 15 at 12.38. Now I'm going to come back to that point and make it clearer. I just want to show you the preview of the images here as I scroll down. And you can see again that at different points We've got the sun coming up, and let's bring up this one again. And what do we see? We've got the orb there again, and the other one up there. Let me step to the next one. It becomes clearer in this one. And again, let's try this one here. This one is on October 20th, 2216, and again we see the, the orb. So I've saved a file of the, the orb shots here, the, the best ones, and in fact let's go into this one because I've refined it even more. And uh, we're going to step through and, and note what happens with this orb that Steve Olson is telling us is in the sky, in the southern hemisphere sky. So again this one, uh, you can see the, the date there, it was downloaded 2017-10-14, so 14th of October 12.37. This one here was the next day, and our orb is in exactly the same place. Isn't that remarkable, Steve, that that orb is in exactly the same place? Now this one here, uh, the date on that one is the 17th of October, 2017, at 22.18. And look at that, our orb is in exactly the same place. There it is right there. This one here is on the 19th of October, and look at that, our orb is in exactly the same place. This one here was on the 20th of October, and our orb is in exactly the same place. So, it doesn't matter what day we look at, it doesn't matter what time we look at, we see that the orb is in exactly the same place. Well, as I've pointed out in previous videos, most people that have a very basic knowledge of astronomy, or a basic knowledge of science, know that the Earth revolves on its axis once every 24 hours, which is why the Sun, the Moon, and the stars appear.
appeared across the sky. So it is actually impossible for an object in space to actually remain in exactly the same place in the sky as the Earth is turning, because as the Earth turns, then the object would also move across the sky. Let's go back to the main images. Let's step through them and see what happens to the stars in the background. You can see the stars rotating across the sky as the Earth turns. Now another interesting thing that we're going to get to here, and remember that I'm in New Zealand, down in the Southern Hemisphere, and what do we have on the New Zealand flag and on the Australian flag? And there's a few other Southern Hemisphere flags that also feature it, and that is the Southern Cross, which you can see just coming up over the horizon here. And if I zoom in on this, I can point it out more clearly. So you've got the, the top of the cross and the bottom of the cross there, and this is one of the stars in the cross member there. So the, the cross is like that. And you've got these two bright stars, which we call the pointer stars, and they're pointing to the top of the Southern Cross. And what I'm going to do next is compare it to the size of the orbs. So let's look at the distance between the, the top of the Southern Cross, this one here, and the bottom of the Southern Cross, or even the distance between the two pointers. And I'm going to come back to this using Starry Night. But first, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. So here is one of the images showing the orb, and here is a side-by-side -side image showing one of the other images with the Southern Cross in it. And you can see there, let me uh, zoom this up, you can see the distance between the top and bottom stars in the Southern Cross. And I would say that the distance between the top star and the bottom star in the Southern Cross is pretty much about the same diameter, angular diameter, as the orb there. Now this is a very important point to remember, because what is the angular distance between these two stars in the sky, to give us some sort of scale of how big this object would be in the sky? So here we are looking in starry night, you can see the two bright pointer stars pointing to the top of the Southern Cross. You've got the bright star at the top of the Southern Cross and the bright star at the bottom of the Southern Cross. Let me turn on the cross so that you can see it there. And what we're going to do is measure the angular distance between the top star and the bottom star in the Southern Cross. So let's check that and as we measure that we see it is 6 degrees. Now, to give you some scale on that, the angular diameter of a full moon is approximately half of one degree. So, at six degrees, we would fit the full moon in there 12 times. Let me turn on a field of view marker for the moon. So, this would be the actual angular size of the moon in the sky compared to the Southern Cross. And as you can see, compared to the Southern Cross and the distance between those two stars at the top of and the bottom, the full moon would fit in there 12 times. Here is a field of view marker with an angular diameter of 6 degrees. As you can see, it fits just between those two bright stars. So if this object were a real object in space, it would have an angular size of approximately 10 to 12 times the size of the full moon. Has anybody noticed a huge object in the sky blocking out the stars 10 to 12 times the size of the full moon? Well, I'm in the southern hemisphere and I can see all the way down to the south celestial pole. In other words, the point that is directly above the south pole. Just like people in the northern hemisphere can see Polaris, I can see all the way down to the South Celestial Pole. And I'm certainly not seeing this object. I'm seeing the Southern Cross in my sky, as I do every night, every clear night. But I'm not seeing this huge object that Steve Olson claims is in the ESO imagery. And here's the point, as I said earlier, that this object, from night to night, does not change position. So we're spanning a period of about a week here, and this object does not change position.
even though the stars are moving across the sky, as they do, from east to west. And this is because it is bird shit on the dome covering the camera. That's all it is. It is something on the camera dome. And that is why it does not move. But Steve Olson, the fear monger, selling his videos, of course, would have you believe that this is a huge object in space. Because his videos are all about clicks and views to make him money. At the end of the day, you know, their own camera is showing two orbs in the sky down in Brazil, right? So you hear Steve Olson laughing at you? That's because he's laughing all the way to the bank with these videos. Every time he uploads one of these fear-mongering videos and it gets thousands of views, he's making money from posting disinformation. If you're supporting Steve Olson and fear-mongers like him by subscribing to his channel and watching his videos, you're actually supporting him making money from disinformation. Thank you for watching.